You just need to be willing to ride that market, ride that storm, and ask yourself the question, is my money better off somewhere else, or am I happy to hold this asset and this investment? Is it a challenging market even for you? The market is challenging for me. Um, an auctioneer is only as good as the product that they're selling. For those of you who may be intending on bidding, we have an exceptional property, terrific home. I think this home really ticks all the boxes. Well, would you be happy to commence the bidding today? Home's here to be bought, so you let me know the number that you're happy to start the auction at here, folks. Top Sydney auctioneer Damien Cooley is getting used to the sound of silence. Week one, we were telling you that you'd need to be circa $1.5 million if you'd like to be competitive here at the auction. Even in a suburb like Stanmore, close to Sydney CBD, sellers' expectations are falling fast. During the campaign, we reduced that quote to 1450000 just too far away from where we need to be. I appreciate your offer, sir. You'll need to be something circa the million four fifty thousand. Three years ago, when the market was booming, the owner paid more than $1.3 million for this place. But caution now reigns supreme in Sydney's auction scene. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to set the property aside in our vendor's favour at $1,450,000. Uh, we'll go straight into negotiations with those registered parties who are here today. I can't thank you for your spirit of bidding, but I can thank you for your attendance. And a round of applause for the auctioneer. Yes, sir. 1, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, Back in the boom, when we were getting five and six registered bidders at every auction, it was really easy to look good. It was easy to extract bids. Buyers were had this fear of missing out, and they were they were almost jumping over the top of each other to place bids and high increments. Now that market's changed. So, congratulations. Well, boy. What you're starting to see is the news stories, which are quite negative around the outlook for housing markets, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, are starting to change people's behaviour. So you're getting a broadening of the downturn. When the market peaked last year, more than 70% of properties in Sydney were selling at auction. It's now less than half. We called the top of the market last year, and it wasn't for any single factor. It was the fact that the market was facing so many headwinds all at the same time, which was quite unprecedented. Hi. Vicky Calthorpe is downsizing and desperate to sell her house in Sydney's Randwick. And how do you feel having to sell into this market? Yeah, it's a bit scary. Vicky's house failed to sell at auction. She and her agent are working on plan B. We've got a few people in the mix, as you know. Because, yeah. I mean, how many groups do have we had through? Yeah. So, over 50. Oh, yeah, easily. We've had over... Since the auction, Vicky's had an offer, but is holding out for more. If you had to discount already or mm. yeah. yeah we have we have um, we've lowered our our expectation we've lowered our price um, I don't know how far or how much further um, we would be prepared to go initially it was generally high priced homes in Sydney and Melbourne for investors but that downturn is now spread and this is the concern I have, is that the likelihood of Australia facing the longest housing downturn in history has increased. And it seems quite plausible to me that house prices will continue to fall for all of the next year into 2020. Absolutely, uh, the, the chances of an economic downturn being fuelled by a housing market downturn are heightened at the moment because of the wealth effect, uh, a reversal of the wealth effect, and because fewer transactions in the market. Australia's recent property boom was overwhelmingly led by Sydney and Melbourne. Over the past decade, Sydney real estate surged ahead of every other capital city apart from Melbourne. When you look at the value of housing across Australia, nearly 60% of Australia's housing value is in two cities, in Sydney and Melbourne. The boom has left many households in these cities with record levels of debt. 
when you look at Australia's wealth, we see about 55% of household wealth in Australia is in the housing asset class. About 70% of Australian household debt is in the housing asset class as well. Australian household debt, it's uh, tracking at about 190% of, of disposable income. It's never been that high. We've just had this multi-decade period where lower and lower rates went into higher and higher debt and higher and higher house prices. Those factors aren't likely to be repeated and that suggests to me that that multi-decade boom has probably come to an end. Everywhere today, young couples are being lured by signs which promise them, if not the house of their dreams, then a house which so easily could become home. Polling suggests three quarters of Australians still view home ownership as part of the Australian way of life. The basic price of the house, Mr Horrocks, is 5,500. Property's long been at the centre of political debate. Way back in 1942, Robert Menzies declared one of our best instincts was the desire to have a little piece of earth with a house and a garden which is ours. The sentiment lives on today. There are three important economic goals that Australians aspire to. To have a job, to support and care for your family, to achieve independence in your retirement and to own your own home. I lived and breathed watching my dad uh, build these blocks of units, start selling them off, and it was sort of like a real, true game of Monopoly, and I loved it. At Aussie, we'll save you! Aussie John Simon became a multi-millionaire riding the boom, taking on the banks by offering cheaper loans. The 71-year-old bought his first apartment when he was just 18. That started me into it, and I thought, this is fantastic. And uh, over the years, yeah, I bought properties and held a lot and sold a lot. Uh, but I think it will always form part of the Australian psyche. And I think it, it's really proved to be a very good thing for Australians rather than go off and blow it on holidays and new cars and all the other stuff to build your nest egg for, for later years in life. Or smashed avocado on toast. Or oh, smash the avocado on toast. I don't mind that. <laughs> Which one is yours? Mine is this black. Like many migrant families, Australia's property obsession was embraced by the Guptas when they moved to Melbourne from Dubai in 1990. You may buy a rental house, 1,100. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I think you must go for that. Yeah. Everyone wants to come to Sydney and Melbourne from overseas. Everyone wants to live in these established cities where the jobs are available. Everyone wants to buy the property here because the value grows in Melbourne and Sydney as compared to the other states. Uh, yes. Okay. yes, please. The Guptas now own more than 30 properties between them. I call it generational wealth. Um, when you're building something with generational wealth, uh, you build it together. So yes, I might have a few properties, Dad might have a few properties, you know, Mum's got a few properties, even Grandma's got a couple up her sleeve, right? You sure change me. It's, for us, it's a never-ending thing. Buying as much of the Monopoly board as one sees fit. You gotta keep the banks honest. My view is that every 10 years, the property doubles. While other investments, there's always risk. When you look at, say, uh, uh, the performance of different asset classes, Housing since 2009 has actually underperformed the equities market. If you add in uh, uh, returns, say dividends from equities and, and the yield for housing, it, it's quite clear that uh, uh, if you owned, uh, say, shares or a diversified portfolio in the share market, you would have seen stronger growth in your, in your overall uh, um, asset portfolio relative to housing. Property investors are now on the front line of the downturn. The major effect has been the borrowing capacity that we've had and the valuations that have, that have dropped, um, not substantially, but have dropped a fair bit, um, which has made the major lenders um, a little bit hesitant to, to, to lend against, um, against current values. Throughout the boom, investor David Jackson was successfully building a property portfolio. Then suddenly, an apartment he bought off the plan in central Sydney's Woolloomooloo was valued at less than he paid. In this particular circumstance, the valuation came in, le came in less than the purchase price, uh, which was news to me after, after investing in properties for, for 10 years. 
Because we're in a small small business, bank lending has has restricted the the amount of debt that we can borrow. Uh, so it's restricted our employment. Uh, you know, the number of employees we can hire. Um, Increasingly, David's had to turn to more expensive second tier lenders. It's harder work being an investor now than it used to be. I think you could say yes. An increasing number of Australians will never have the means to buy their own home, let alone amass a property portfolio. The recent boom in Australia's two biggest cities has created a yawning gap between what people earn and what it costs to buy. In the mid-1990s, median house prices were about four times our median income. It's nine times that in Sydney today. If you said to me, uh, 20 years ago, people in 2018, uh, young people are taking mortgages for nearly a million bucks to buy a house. I would have said, well, what are you smoking? And what's it, you know, we just don't know what the next 10 or 20 years is going to bring. But it's, I'll tell you one thing, it's going to be very, very different. For those of you who may be intending on bidding... The great Australian dream has become a fantasy for many. Prices have fallen sharply in the past year, by 9.5% in Sydney and almost 6% in Melbourne. But just as homes are getting cheaper, access to money is tougher than it's been in decades. The mechanism and the main driver of the correction this time is a credit tightening. It's a reduction in borrowing capacity. And the problem is I just can't see what reverses that quickly. It would take a major reversal of policy decisions by the government and the regulators to try to attempt to reflate the housing market. And at the moment, that's not the case. I'm in your hands to look for that opening offer. I can't start it without your help though. 